Well, howdy party people and space cadets, and welcome to Retro, Random, and Rare, the show where I talk about stuff from my personal collection that falls into one of the three aforementioned categories. If not all of them, but not this week. This week's episode is just falling into the retro category, and I'm going to be taking a look at some of my G.I. Joe collection. Actually, I shouldn't say some of my G.I. Joe collection. We're going to be taking a look at my entire G.I. Joe collection, because sadly, foolishly, Back in the late 90s, I sold almost the entire collection, for some reason, I don't even know why, to a buddy of mine who was super into G.I. Joe. But I held on to these four or five figures ever since, and I still love them, and we're going to take a look at them right now. So we're going to start out here with a figure I talked about in my top Cobra figures list. And you will all probably very quickly notice a running theme in these figures that I have left. And... You know what? I had some people kind of say that it was hard to see some of the things I was displaying because of my big furry goblin hands. And just the other day, as a gag, I bought some silicone human gloves. I think the label was, um, it was like pale and scrawny or something like that. But yeah, let me put those on and maybe that'll uh, cover up some of this hair. Be right back. Oh, yeah, there we go. And yeah, uh, it wasn't pale and scrawny. It was pasty and scrawny. But anyway, so the first figure I have here is the Alley Viper, which, again, I talked about in this video. And wow, did I just love this figure. I know a lot of folks don't dig the, the neon, or as they call it, the Dayglow era of G.I. Joe, but that was really like a hype for me. And this particular figure I loved so much. And as I've said before, I liked figures that I could pretend to be other things. Like I never once played with this guy as the Alley Viper. To me, he was his own like different characters and kind of liked him as a superhero. And I would pretend like you see the shield, he would kind of like be able to fly along like behind the shield. And I liked his visor thing here. And even though I think you were supposed to be able to see the eyes, I liked the way it covered like his nearly his whole face. And my alley viper here, he's still still in good shape. Like all the joints and stuff are still tight. And he's almost complete. But I do think there was a a grappling hooky thing that went right here. Don't know what happened to that. But either way, I played with this figure a ton. I'm shocked that he's in such good shape, shape even still. And speaking of the Alley Viper, and it continues to, oh, look at that, another Alley Viper. Now this one, I don't know where his accessories and stuff have run off to, but I thought this one, I had to snatch him up as well, because it was kind of like the same coolness, but with an even still, come on, focus, man. Focus. He's just refusing to focus, isn't he? With just an even cooler helmet, and it still opens up, and he's... He's good in good shape, good tight. Everything like like the other one. Just wish I had his... I don't even remember what he came with. I would assume a backpack and maybe a shield. But I remember as much as I liked this one. There was something about this one I thought was super cool too. And I've always... I don't know. I liked this black and yellow color scheme. And because of the style of the yellow, it doesn't make him look very Bumblebee-like. It's just kind of... I don't know, more tiger print or something, even though it kind of gets you associate tiger with orange and black. But either way, this guy was cool too. And now I don't remember exactly what or how I played with him. I can't imagine I played with him as a superhero unless it was kind of an anti hero y type. And speaking of, Day Glow Alley Viper. Oh, look at that. Another. Another Alley Viper. And this one's just kind of the same as this one, just much Day Glow -er. And I guess closer to the original's color scheme. And I always liked when the characters had the sculpted weapons. Because I had the darndest time, oh, focus, kind of keeping up with the G.I. Joe weapons. I guess they were so small. But in these guys were like, here he has this knife and this grenade-y thing. It's cool, the Cobra signal is kind of engraved looking too. It really just, you could use your imagination as to the weapons, like them pulling it out and such. And something I noticed too, check that out, those weird, creepy eyes. I don't really know the story behind the Range Viper, I mean, Range Vipers, the Alley Vipers, but yeah, that's, actually, let's see if the, 
the orange guy, if we can get him to focus. Something, I don't know, something about his color or something. There, there we go. Look at that. Okay, he has just normal kind of black eyes, but... So, I don't know. What do you guys think? Who do you like better? The orange and blue or the black and yellow? It's tough to say. I think I like the black and yellow in this model of range, or I keep doing that, Alley Viper, but I think I like this one in the, the orange and blue. The orange and blue that doesn't want to focus. Stop looking at those Alley Vipers. There we go. And I think the reason I keep repeatedly saying Alley Viper, or <laughs> you know, get it, uh, drunk, get drunk, 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 mixed up is because and next we have the range viper and he i don't know why because this is a later joe i got but man if he isn't all kinds of wonky i mean look at that he's got the wonky legs wonky legs i'm sure like joe folks know how easily how to fix that because not broken really just just wonky legged and out of focus there we go but yeah, this is a cool thing. I always love this guy. I love that skull-like helmet. I mean, I know they don't really look a whole lot alike, but he always used to remind me of the Berserkers in the Beastmaster. Remember, they put the little worm thingy in the people's ears, and they put the awesome mask on them, and then they run around in their underwear screaming with the claws. Granted, he's not in his underwear, but how much cooler would this figure have been if it had just been like this dude, this helmet, and a pair of, like, a Speedo or some underwear. Maybe the boots running around. Da, 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 da. Yeah, that would have been a cool figure. I do seem to talk about people in their underpants. This is a lot, don't I? But underpants just make things cool. All right. And next. And I think this is the first good guy. of the, At least I think this was a good guy. Ah, oh, it's been so long. This was a Ninja Force character whose name I do not remember. Probably should have looked that up before I started filming. Actually, or maybe he was a villain. Hmm. Somebody let me know. But yeah, that was kind of the... I mentioned the the, the Dayglow thing, but I'd say Ninja Force was the height of G.I. Joe for me. That's when I really got in, really got into it, started reading the comics. I just liked everything about it. And this guy I thought was super groovy because... Not only is he wearing kind of like look like a hockey mask, he's got a ponytail, and if a way to sell to a young Slim was to throw a ponytail on something, because young Slim loves some ponytails and some long hairs. And talk about the, the sculpted weapons, but his sculpted weapons are a little odd. They like kind of the way they curve too much against his chest. And but though, I mean pink nunchucks, that's cool. I, I'd like me some pink nunchucks. Yeah, it's bugging me. I can't remember this dude's name. Or if he was a good guy or a bad guy. Research. Not done. And then moving right along, we have now this guy. I'm most definite was a good guy. And that, I think his name was Chabang? Tabang? Tabang. He? No, just kidding. It's not that kind of show. But actually, it is that kind of show now. But yeah, he was super cool. Another Ninja Force guy, kind of a martial artist-y looking guy. With this neat, like, cloth part of his bandana. I always liked him, and he was another one I kind of liked that pretend was a superhero. Reminded me a little bit of Iron, like old school Iron Fist. Now, he's not quite as tight as the Vipers, but he's not as wobbly or wonky as the Range Viper, but he's got a little bit of, got kind of a little dangly leg here. Hey, look. A little dangly leg, a little dangly leg. But more nice detail on him with the little bullety things. I don't know, is that bullets or is that grenades? Can't tell. And I always used to like to pretend that these stars, that he would do kicks, and they would fly off and stab into the bad guys. And again, another one that I never played with as the character, I don't think. And I remember he came with some cool ninja weapons, or martial artsy kind of weapons. Wish I still had those. Chabang. Chabang. Something. And then the last one, because sadly this is the, the remains of my Joe collection. And that is Sagat. Sagat. Bob Saget from Full House, but he just, he really fell on hard times after the Tanner family kind of went their own ways, and I guess he lost his hair and an eye, and the Olsen twins gave him this scar thing, but yeah, it was rough, but at least he got all buff and jacked up, I mean, look at that, look at those muscles, he's looking a bit like Al from Kaiju Shorts, with all the muscles, but all silliness aside, which I never put silliness fully aside. 
I, I liked the Street Fighter line quite a bit. And I know I had the Ken. I had the Vega. I, I, and I can't imagine I would have sold, the, at very least, the Vega. Because I always really liked Vega. He's probably somewhere, I bet, in storage still. I just haven't run across him. So I fibbed it to you. This is not my full G.I. Joe collection. But it's my full G.I. Joe collection that is with me now here in this strange, mysterious place that I won't say where it is. And for the outro, I'm going to take these gloves off because they are uncomfortable. And that's all the time we have for this week. Please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know the pink hockey mask nunchuck guy's name. And may your pants always be filled with marshmallows.